What is your call me old fashioned butt? Just give me three fucking knobs to control my car's AC, please. And then it disables the touch screen feature BC you're driving and it's unsafe to be distracted while driving per the display. Yeah dude, then stop making every function an 8 step process. Also, I hate driving. Number, you get touch screen. In fact you know what, touch screen for your turn signals. Now what puny consumer? Wait no fuck you. Touch screen gas and brake pedal too. I wouldn't be surprised if this shit happened somehow. Nah, they'll try to replicate the wheel on the touchpad. Use three fingers, rotate counterclockwise to turn left. However, the sensitivity is a little off and it may erratically reset to maximum angle left, right until you turn the car off and on again. Touch screens everywhere and cameras watching your eyes to beep at you annoyingly if you take your eyes off the road. How am I supposed to use my touch screens without looking at them? By touch, it doesn't work that way, robot car. You use them with the master touch screen that also is your horn button, and blares ads that you like a gas station pump. You have to wait for an ad to come on where the cameras are granted to the leniency period so puny consumer can watch and write is your opportunity to navigate 8 deep sub -minus. I'm getting close to being in the market for a new phone again. My three most wanted items in a phone are, a swappable battery, an SD card slot, a 3.5mm headphone jack outlet. Guess which three items don't exist in a lot of phones anymore? Your options now are, external battery bank or a set of tools to replace your actual phone battery after warranty when it stops holding a charge. Fuck you, peasant. Get a bigger data plan and use cloud storage. Also buy the version of this phone that has the largest internal drive up front. You can still find plenty of Android phones with headphone jacks, or a Bluetooth headset. The problem is when my Bluetooth earbuds die after 3 hours, I have to stop using them and charge them for 30 minutes or I have to use some idiot dongle to use conventional earbuds. Real buttons are especially better in cars. In fact, the idea should be to have audio, climate controls you can operate by feel without looking, or at most only have to take a quick glance at so you can keep your eyes on the road where they belong. A few years ago I went online and found a place to get custom playing cards. I used it to make a deck of cards of pictures of my cousins, my siblings, and myself growing up for my grandmother. It was very fun and in a similar vein. In Switzerland we have an app by the post office for sending postcards. Choose a photo on your phone and send for a buck. Once every 24 hours you can send one for free, with a small ad printed on the back where address and text go, and I just send them to myself. Type and date and event as text so you remember. I keep pictures of people I care about and hang them up on empty walls. Writing things down with your hands is proven to help people remember things. In college I used to take notes on my laptop, but I realized I barely absorbed anything, so I switched back to writing in a notebook and everything became a lot easier to remember. Sometimes I just feel like being fancy. So I'll put on a nice dress and some makeup and then just watch a movie at home by myself, drinking Kool-Aid or a mixed drink out of a wine glass, depending on if I have work later or not. I read a thing a while back about someone's grandmother having passed away, and when the family was going through her things, they found her fine china dishes that had never been used because the occasion was never fancy or important enough to break them out, so they sat as useless decorations for forever. The person then served dinner that night, which was nothing fancy, on this fine china. The moral of the story was stop waiting for an occasion, and start making them. Drink that fancy expensive wine you've been saving for the right moment.
Wear those beautiful dresses and make yourself feel amazing just because you want to. Life is too short to spend waiting for the right moments. When I bought a new PlayStation I started looking at 4K, 60HZ TVs. Literally none of the major outlets carried one without the crapware. And you can get a monitor that has speakers, what a TV nowadays should be, but they're small. I found a few TV-sized monitors, so, you know, a real TV, and they're so much more expensive. Two that confuse me the most are washing machines and microwaves. I have to be standing in front of them to load them. Why do I need an app or Alexa to turn them on? The buttons are within my reach. I understand the existence of smart washing machines for some things. If you live in a group setting, alerts about your clothes being done or a washer being free can be a godsend. But in a private home, I'm not sure what additional value they give you. My washing machine is not smart but it has a timer function I can use to delay a wash which means I can put the load in, go to bed, and during my morning meeting, WFH, load the dryer or hang things out on the clothes horse. What happens when the app stops getting updates? My dad has a blender for the 1970s that works great still. A few of the soothed VD cookers literally have no buttons on them. You need an app to even turn them on. In 2021 that's okay, I guess. In 2026, or 2031, you think those apps will exist, and be compatible with iPhone 22? Or Android 20? Or will those $200 heating elements and water pumps be totally useless? Wish I had a free Reddit award. I mean, why put a little computer in every fucking thing? And it breaks before anything else and the whole thing have to be thrown away. I still have the 70s and 80s electric and electronic items that works just fine and they are not smart but well built and reliable just build things well and let people use what's between their ears following on from that a kid's first big electronic device should be a computer not an ipad or phone there are some things a tablet will never be able to do computer skills are really important but as more and more people are setting them aside in favor of tablets and phones for their kids it means computer literacy goes down. I'm not saying they have to know how to code or become IT experts, but they should know how to do basic things like navigate a file explorer and how to search for things and the general structure of how most programs are laid out. Things like what menus usually contain what, basic universal commands like copy and paste, that sort of thing. Even a crappy laptop can do so much more than a phone. If you have basic tech competency, and half the time you won't even have to teach them it. I learned how to use files systems and whatnot by trying to mad oblivion and who knows the amount of people who learned HTML and JavaScript from trying to make crappy Josities, MySpace, Tumblr pages. Kids are smart, don't hinder their technical abilities by giving them a dumbed down tablet as their introduction to computers, please. I used to help out a school library and there's nothing more infuriating than trying to teach an 8 year old how to use Word because it's like trying to teach a 60 year old who never grew up around the stuff. Except they have a much shorter attention span. Word, a program that's the result of decades of design refinements for the layman. I agree 100%. Teach kids computer smarts but keep them off social media. I especially agree with no iPads. I already don't want kids, but seeing babies and toddlers in public playing on iPads blasting Fortnite and Cocomel in at full volume infuriates me. It's lazy parenting and I'm terrified for what mental and developmental issues it will bring. Oh boy do I agree with this. When my sisters are over with their families, their kids sit at the table to eat with us and we all have to converse over some inappropriate YouTube video they're blaring on their iTouch or iPad that an 8 year old should not be watching in the first place. Man I have a friend who is so naturally beautiful, 
seriously she can't walk into a room of new people without getting hit on. She recently started using these facet tune filters for her Instagram pictures and they look so fucked up. She doesn't even look human. She posted one the other day where she facet tuned the shit out her five-year daughter's face and it looks so bizarre. I almost want to say something about it but I don't want to hurt her feelings. I got a group spam text last week, one of those with a link to porn, that also probably downloads malware into your phone. Before I had a chance to block it, someone texted. This just showed up on my nine-year-old daughter's phone. Stop it now. To which my immediate thought was, this is why you don't give a nine-year-old a phone, dickhead. My 17-year-old recently told us she is now glad that she didn't have a smartphone until she was 13. Way too many friends that were messed up by having the internet too soon and anything they posted on social media is so cringe looking back. Call me old-fashioned, but you shouldn't post shit tons of pictures of your kid to social media. Let something in this always on world be private and sacred, for fuck's sake. Stop using your children as a dopamine gateway. All cars should have a manual way to roll down the windows, at least the driver's and maybe also the passenger's side windows. Power windows are great dot 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 until there's no power. Call me old fashioned but I want a backup way to get out of the car without having to break anything, in an emergency. I agree, that's the one thing I love about my 94 truck. I have AC, but there's just something nostalgic about being able to crank the windows down and push up on the back window. Besides, I absolutely hate having to keep the child lock on in the Jeep because the dog has figured out how to roll up and roll down the back windows. Call me old-fashioned but architecture looked much nicer 100 plus years ago. I strongly dislike ugly modern office buildings, same with houses. They don't need all sorts of peaks and four different types of siding slash shingles slash fake stone mixed together. I quite like modern offices, but modern houses like on grand designs all look cool to me, they don't feel like homes. I also don't like open plan houses, maybe it says something about me as a person, but I like having doors and walls between me and other people. Seriously, as our pediatrician explained, the human immune system expects a certain number of hits. If a person isn't being exposed to enough germs, allergens, etc. the body thinks the immune system isn't working properly, and ramps up the sensitivity. This leads to some, by no means all, allergies. Everyone always blames technology, or the stranger danger that the news spouted non-stop for years. But the real reason is a bit more spooky. It used to be, when we had a functioning society, that if you let your kid go play in the neighborhood, there were several assumptions. Mom is at home and you can run home if something happens. Other moms are at their homes, often outside, and can keep a casual eye out, and be available for emergencies. Now, in a society that increasingly requires several incomes to afford rent and raising a kid, Hey, all those houses are empty. Mom isn't home. She's working. Dad isn't home. He's working. Billy's mom isn't home. She's working. Sarah's mom isn't home. She's working. They're tired when they are home. Unfortunately work really takes the energy out of some people. Ideally they should try their hardest to get out and high core go bowling etc. So they don't feel stuck in that depressive circle of work, TV. Eat, shower, bed repeat. My take is that the whole 40 hour work week, not sure if other countries are the same story, is a little flawed. People too tired to do much else and on the days they do have off you may spend your day cleaning, grocery shopping and other chores. It's a whole other thing, but I really think most adults have been shamed socialized out of enjoying life properly. Adults don't know how to enjoy themselves except to eat, drink, have sex, or watch someone else have fun. Because we've been taught that everything fun is childish. We should really be encouraging adults to play like kids, 
and they'll pass it on to their kids. If the sex scene adds to the story or genuinely advances the plot somehow then I'm cool with it. But this is not the case 9 times out of 10. Throwing in a sex scene just to have one has gotten on my nerves as the years have gone on. Call me old fashioned, but I will always make this gesture to signify calling, being on the phone. Versus what I've seen some younger people do where they put their whole flat palm up to the rear in the shape of modern cell phones. Just imagine explaining rotary phones to a young kid now. Call me old fashioned but I really don't see the need for something like a Amazon Alexa. You want the lights on just get up and turn it on. You want to play music just get the small speaker or turn whatever device you're using up all the way. Not that hard. Also it's kinda just another way for corporations to spy on you probably. Not like they're not doing that already but why would I pay money for that? And Amazon Alexis just seems sorta creepy to me for some reason. My ex used to shout Alexa, turn off the light, even though the bedside light was 4 inches from his hand and I was sleeping. Thanks you prick now I'm awake and hating you, why not just do it like a normal person? Call me old fashioned, but, children under the age of 12 shouldn't have their own electronic device, other than maybe a Nintendo or something. iPads and smartphones are not necessary for a 7 year old. Bring back coloring books, cars should go back to the big stick handbrake instead of the small little button. My mind cannot handle it, I prefer physical books and notes on paper and photo albums over their digitalized forms. Not everything has to be filmed or photographed, it's nice to have pictures to commemorate the trip by, and I do wish my friends would take a little more, but in the end it's more important for me to enjoy company. Being on your phone while going out with someone is not done. When I'm meeting with someone somewhere, I want to talk. Simple sleepovers with friends, where we drink whatever and play family games or just talk, is better than parties. I still burn CDs and play them on a 6 disc changer and the car. No plugging in, unplugging my phone or remembering to pause it when I stop driving. No fumbling around to change tracks when I'm trying to drive. Dealing with CDs is far easier and can't be construed as texting while driving. Blank CDs are pretty cheap and if one starts to skip I just rip another one. I have all the discs saved to my hard drive. Call me old fashioned, but I like physical media. Spotify and Netflix are wonderfully convenient, but I object to the fact that what I want to watch or listen to rests on the whims of the record companies, artists and studios allowing me access to that media. When I have a CD or DVD that album or movie is mine to watch as and when I want to, for as long as I own the media and the device to play it on. Call me old fashioned, but what the fuck happened to makeup, why are there now 8 layers of foundation, when all it does is make skin uglier. I totally understand makeup for confidence, and when I go to work I use a little enhancement, like a dark spots concealer, a blush, and a mascara. But last year one had my makeup done professionally. And call me old fashioned but I am not exaggerating when I say she applied 7 layers of skin coverage before she even got to cheeks, eyes, lips, brows. It went like this, and she wanted me to buy every product, the total was dollar odd 800. Primer, concealer, contour 1, plus special sponge, contour 2, liquid foundation, plus special brush, powder foundation plus different brush, mattifier, plus special puff. I looked like a brown clown. That was before the color. I asked around with younger girlfriends and friends who wear makeup, dudes too, I'm all for drag, and they said yes that's the normal number of layers. Aunt, I have clear skin, the odd dark spot, but otherwise it glows and is rich in color. So call me old fashioned, but makeup is the ugly not the face underneath it. What is it like to make out with a woman in a full face of Kardashian level makeup? I'm not judging. I want to know, does it rub off on your face and shirt? 
It's such a weird thing reading posts online saying things like I'm not sure about my boyfriend, girlfriend, we've been dating for a couple months, we fight a lot, and we don't have much in common. My partner wants to get married, but that seems way too much way too fast. By the way, we also have a toddler and another kid on the way. Advice.